Hey man, it's your boy Bigger Ranking, man. I'm here to stay, man. Legend in the making, man, for real. Lala, what up? If you ain't locked in Lala shit, you losing, man. Dang, gave us shit. Lala, what up? Lala, what up? Big Nuke! Hey, we got a man now. A man. I want a bitch and a friend now. Hey, rats, no bank account. Definition of great. We great. Hey, black murder game, we straight. So, who is Bigger Ranking? Oh, man. That's a nigga from the hood that kind of loved music and stuck to music as a DJ. I feel like I was I'm like the TD Jakes of the club, you know what I'm saying? I'm like the ghetto CNN, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. I'll let you know what's popping. So talk about that. Talk about how does that rush feel when you know you got the pace of the crowd going? See, a lot of people get on the microphone and they be hosting a party. Like me, I'm from Jamaica where you, you have a selector, with, that's what y'all call a DJ, and then a DJ, mainly, is an MC to us, you know what I'm saying? So when I'm on the mic, I command the crowd to listen to me. If I can't get 75 or 80% of the crowd to pay attention to me, I feel like I'm not doing my job. And some DJs be up there talking and people doing all type of different stuff. That bothers me. I need everybody to be focused on what we're doing, what we're talking about. So, you know what I'm saying? I could be a part of what's going on in case it's a fight or something. I'm a part of saying, hey, break this up or do You got to have the attention of the people to really control your crowd. Most definitely. Um, so talk about being from Jamaica. Just talk about maybe the culture of sorts and how different it is in America and maybe how that's impacted you as a person. The, 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 the thing that me, I grew, grew up in Jamaica, I was like, I was in shield. I was shielded away from drugs. Like we didn't know nothing about no cocaine and no, you know, about no oral sex and no shit like that. You <laughs> feel me? We were shielded away from certain things as a youth growing up in Jamaica. But the, 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 but, you know, we have an open mind when it comes to music. Like I grew up on Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers, the Never Brothers, Percy Sledge. You know what I'm saying? You know, Stevie one. I grew up on all type of music, country music, soul music, rock and roll, you know what I'm saying? We grew up on all type of music, so whenever you hear a, 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 a real Jamaican DJ playing, you're not able to hear anything, you feel me? Cause we go into all genuine music, you know what I'm saying? Music suit the savage beast, man. For everything that happened to you in life, it's a song for that. If you had a broken heart, it's a song for that. If you've been hit by a truck, it's a song for that. If you've been drugged through the mud, it's a song for that. If you've been right. to prison, it's a song for that. You Most feel? definitely. And, and it's crazy that you said my dad, he, all he listened to is reggae, and they literally mixed every song, any type of song, and switch up the tempo to beat. So that's true. It's crazy how Jamaicans and, you know, so open minded to music. That's awesome. Um, so kind of talk about the importance of a producer locking in with an artist and vice versa. Um, I always use this for example, like Trick Daddy, like Trick Daddy first album. He, I think Trick Daddy had like a man producer he was dealing with. And man, it was so together that I was telling the artist the other day, like sometimes it's good for artists to lock in with a producer and he, it, the whole album might not be produced by him. But if he produces a few, most of the tracks and he putting it together, and whatever tracks you get from outside, he put them together, sometimes it goes better than you just flim flamming here and there and everywhere, you know what I'm saying? You have producers, you have beat makers. Mm -hmm. Beat makers just make you a beat and he record it and then take his money and he just go. A producer, composer, like take for instance a guy like T Black mm -hmm. uh, or Sticker Bush, when they record you, they're gonna tell you like, hey man, that's not good enough, go back in there and do that. Uh, sing it like this. Uh, 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 I was in the studio with T Black, the hitmaker, and this one person was saying one line for an hour. But when that person hit that, everybody was like, hey, yeah, he got it. And that really kind of proved to me that you got beat makers and you got producers. You know, some guys just, they just make a beat and put you on it and record you and collect the money and then sit down. I don't really like those. Most definitely. Um, so just how long have you been in the game? I mean, I know, but let the people know. Well, I've been in the game, this year will be 28 years since I've been doing it, you know what I'm saying? And um, I started from the bottom, you know what I'm saying? I'm always, you know, I love music. So 
I, every time I go through life, music always brings me back on my feet because I'm a dreamer. If it's a certain type of car I like, I dream about it before I buy it. If it's a certain type of house I want to live in, I dream about it before I get it. Certain type of girl I want, I dream about it before I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm like a dreamer, you know. I'm one of those kids that, when, when I say special, I don't mean I'm retarded. I mean, I'm one of them special kids because when I was six months old in Jamaica, they dug my grave because I was none of my oh. organs work and they wow. you know they tie your little big toe together and just put you at the end of the bed to die and my grandmama came in and boiled some bushes and some stuff and they said I pissed for four hours and they called me dead and wake. So like my grandmama always feel like I was special, man. She always feel like I was that dude. She always feel like I was a special dude. So coming up in life, I always feel like I was here for something. And I, I have a voice that just attract people. When I, it be everybody be talking on the mic. As soon as I pick up the mic, people turn around and look. And it mm -hmm. just over the years, it just made me feel like I'm invincible, man. I'm, I was made for this. I was put here for this. I was built for this, man. I'm this. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop, reggae. I love every type of music. You know what I'm saying? And you don't find too many people that dig every type of music. But so I, true. Definitely. So what, what motivates you? What keeps you going? And what ex what inspires you to keep going after all these years? Because you know it's different nowadays. Music scene is different. So what inspires bigger? You know, um, my manager told me the other day, he said, funny thing about it, man. A guy might come around you with good talent, but just the way they talk and they vibe, you might back away. But a guy with good manners, mm and good personality, you always just deal with them in a different way and like you would give them your shirt off your back. And I was like, I was brought up in an era where manners was everything. Mm -hmm. Like if you see some, if you go to the store and you buy a, a, a pack of gum and you put the money on the counter and you know, mama be like, pick that up, you know, put it in the lady's hand, the cashier's hand, you know what I'm saying? It's like those type of stuff is still in me and I still love the morals and the value in hip hop. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you don't believe in God, I really don't want to be working on your project because we're going two different directions. And when I talk, I talk from the heart. You can listen to my intros. I go and I find out everything about you. And, and, and when I, your, your intro is the content of your life. You feel me? And when I drop the intro, it got to fit you. So it's, if you don't believe in God, I don't know if I can work with you because we go in two different directions, you know what I'm saying? Right. I'm deep into it, but I'm, I'm deep into people who have good manners, you know what I'm saying? I hate people who come to me and hey man, you need to fuck with me. No, you need to fuck with me, nigga. I'm more popular than you. Shit, hell, I need to fuck with you. I don't know who you are. You know who I am, though. So, people don't know how to approach people, and a lot, a lot of artists mm -hmm. have a lot of problem with DJs because you don't know how to approach a DJ. Don't be like, hey man, you need to play my song, and I got the hottest song in the world. I've never got a hit in my life from an artist. I always got it from a DJ. Because every artist in this song is number one. Mm -hmm. DJs, they're going to be true about it. Mm -hmm. If I respect you and you say play this song, I ain't going to say it twice, I'm going to play it. If an artist say play this song is the best song, I might not believe you because I hear it every day. Mm -hmm. It's too common. Very true. So discuss what it means to break a record. I know what it means, but just so they can know. What does it mean to break a record as a DJ? What it means to break a record, man. It's like an orgasm, you know? It makes you feel good to see somebody on BET collecting an award, you know, for um, for something that you do. You know what I'm saying? It feels good to see somebody on MTV collecting an award for something that you put together from scratch, you know? And, 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 and I used to, when I was younger, it used to bother me when I break an artist's record and he didn't really give me the attention I needed. I even come look out for me on my birthday or something. But then, you know, um, a wise dude, I call him a wise man because he gave me a lot of advice, you know. A good friend of mine, he told me, he said, look man, when you break these records for these artists, you're driving a brand new car. The kids going to college, living in a nice house. God is blessing you. See, now you're looking for your blessing from a man. Your blessing come from God. So quit worrying about who record you broke and it didn't do nothing for you. Just thank God because all those blessings come in, in different ways. 
people looking out for your children, your rent being paid, your car notes being paid, the blessing is coming. And that's when I really, really found myself. I start taking responsibility of big ranking, of what big ranking do. And when I break a record, I felt like I just raised a kid and sent him out there. I don't be looking for nothing, because being real is giving without expecting nothing. Took me a while to find that out. Mm. You feel me? So breaking a record is like getting the record and you have the emotions of the writer of the record. The emotion of the person who made the beat, how they felt. Cause when a when a producer make a beat, he hype, he's like, man, this that shit. Then when the artist get it, he was like, oh man, I'm writing to this oh, this is gonna be it. Have that emotion. So when you're breaking the record, it's like your record. And when it's broken, you give it back to them. But the only way you can break this record, you gotta get into it. You gotta love this shit. You gotta be like, man, this that because the people in the club, if you're a big name DJ, they're listening to you. You the ghetto CNN. They listen for the news. You getting it in. So breaking record is the best feeling. Especially if the artists just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. It's just better. One one of the artists that I've worked with that really, really like. Like I watched them from scratch. It was two chain, like two mm -hmm. chain. I came in, we did Trapper Villa one, then Trapper Villa two. He was out of here, man. But two chain dealt with the crowd. He was a, he's a people's person. You know what I'm saying? He is a good example for artists to watch. Two chain come out. And he just start speaking, everybody just start looking. His swag, the way he talked, the way he plays his words, his wordplay, man. It was wonderful watching him come up in the game. And he still speak to me just like he did the day we met. Nothing but love, nothing but respect. And he always thanked me, but I always thank him for giving me opportunity to work with him. Because Two Chan is one. I didn't never I never I'll never run to nobody else like Two Chan. Mm. Never. I don't care what nobody say. I'm not riding no dick. Two Chain is one of the artists that, if you really get to know this dude, he's spectacular. Mm. The way he comes up with stuff. And he always, whenever he calls you, he always asks you about your family, always asks you about your health. Just a good dude. And that's one of the dudes that I kept in my head all the time. Whenever I meet a young artist and I see them doing anything, I always give him some of the advice that I learned from Two Chain as an artist, you know what I'm saying? Right, that's deep. Um, so talk about Real Nigga Radio. <laughs> you know, Real Nigga Radio, I was, you know, I was one of them dudes in the streets that I came from the streets, so being a real nigga is like, you do real shit. So I was in Jacksonville and um, the dude had a radio station that it was a pirate station. And um, I had a little dude, Jay Baby, you know, which, Really my best friend. And I, I was supposed to go over there and do this little radio show. So I said, we're gonna name it Real Nigga Radio. But after I looked into it, you got 200 Real Nigga Radio on Google. You Google Real Nigga Radio, it's like 200 on. Everybody got Real Nigga Radio. But my voice and my hustle made my Real Nigga Radio, cause you can't patent Real Nigga Radio. I licensed WRNR as a radio station, but you couldn't license real nigga radio because you can't license the word nigga, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. One day, a, a, a guy called me and said, hey man, this is my real nigga radio. I'm saying, man, you and 199 other people. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you do in life, some other people are gonna say it's theirs and some other people are gonna say it's just, man, we did whatever, but I know what I did. I know the work I put in. I know that the lot of free stuff I did just to make my stuff become a brand. Mm -hmm. I, Cause whatever you do and didn't get paid for it, that means it's a passion if you do it again. A lot of people do things and they make no money, they don't do it again cause it's not their passion. Mm -hmm. This is my passion. You know, real nigga radio is something that I used to break records. It broke so many artists, and I love it because it's dear to my heart. Right. Like I said, being a real nigga is giving without expecting a motherfucking thing. That's being a real nigga. You know, all this other real nigga shit is just saturated shit. But I did mine. Check my background, man. My resume is longer than 95 South. 
I don't have to mention how many artists I broke. Just go through their timeline. I go through their goddamn bio and they tell you, okay, bigger rank. And the first one broke my record. I didn't ask them for nothing. But now, my brand is that shit. So it might cost a little bit mm -hmm. to get my shit, but it's mine. I built it. Blood, sweat, and tear. I miss a bunch of. First time my kids smile, the first time they say a word, their graduation from school, I miss a lot of that shit just to build my brand. Mm -hmm. You know? So people be like, man, you can't do this for me. I'm out here by myself. I've been out here by myself taking care of my family. If you want to go to college to be a nurse, a doctor, whatever, you got to pay a tuition. There ain't no way should my shit be free for you to become a millionaire. You got to understand, I'm not just not a DJ, my nigga. I'm just not a DJ. Bigger ranking, real nigga radio, bigger is better, team bigger ranking, cool running DJ, all this shit, I built all this shit from scratch. With my money, my time, I lost two or three good relationships building these shits. Mm -hmm. You feel me? A lot of my kids miss being around me to build all this, you know what I'm saying? You people just gotta understand. You know, this is, it, it takes a long time. And um, speaking of real nigga radio, my man, Sticker Bush, man, like, he produced all my real nigga radio. Sticker Bush record everything I say, my commercials. He's a big part behind me. Also, 250 plus, a big part behind me. You know what I'm saying? Um, Boss Security is a big force behind me. Kingpin Rob Jogging are the big force behind me, Breezy. I got a team of people who love me, a team of people who always there for me. When shit don't go right, they're right there hugging me and telling me it's going to be okay tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I got a supportive team that never let me down. And yeah, you know, I'm in my 50, man. You know, I know most of the guys I grew up with didn't, didn't make it to 50. But I can tell you one thing. For any young nigga doing this, I respect them to the bone, but they could never outwork me. Because this is what I do. People, when you gonna retire and do what? Right. This is what I do. Music. This is what I do. I never get distracted by money. Never got distracted by pussy. I never get distracted by niggas selling me dreams. Mm -hmm. I'm always focused and doing this shit. That's why every time you listen to one of my tapes, I got thousands of tapes. I don't repeat myself, and I don't write shit down. God just handed it to me. I just open my mouth, and I just speak, because God handed me this, and I'm gonna use it until I can't use it no more. It's all about God. It's all about God. I'm a God-fearing man. I pray to him every day. I thank him for my children. I thank him that they can go to college by me DJing. I thank him that they can drive nice cars. I think they got careers. I love my kids, and it's all through God and this DJ thing. And a lot of people don't respect it, but you got to go through it, man. Because mm -hmm. whatever God took me through, sometimes I feel like I ain't going to make it out, but I make it. Whatever he put me through, I'll grow through it. I don't want to just complain. I don't want to complain no more. Nobody want to hear that shit. I just take responsibility. Mm -hmm. If I took my car to get it fixed and the tire blew out right after I get it fixed, I don't get mad. I just change it and then go there and get mad at them. But I ain't going to be there beating on my car, getting mad. I'm this bullshit. Man, no, no, no. No, it's happened. Then I go back there and argue about, man, why you gave me a bad tire or whatever. But I don't waste my strength on just air. You know what I'm saying? I always focus my, my whatever anger I have, I'm going to focus it to what I'm supposed to be angry about. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But I do control myself to the point. Cause I got to set an example for these kids who love me. Set an example for my kids, my grandkids. I got to set an example for all of them. So that's a bigger ranking, man. Mm. That was beautiful. I'm glad you touched based on how it's a career and people got to treat it as such. You know what I mean? Just because we work in independently for ourselves, do not try to sell a shirt. We're going to definitely make sure we get what we deserve. Um, so that's, that's very important. So talk about the importance of having a DJ crew. Um, not everybody has a successful DJ crew. I got a successful DJ crew because I made myself successful before I went and put a crew together. Some people put crews together 
because they can or because they have a few people that can call and say, let's put a crew together. A DJ crew is like a DJ family. A DJ crew is like your brothers and your sisters. A DJ crew is like a fraternity. It's like something wholesome to you. Like your DJ brother mean a lot. Like I go into a city and one of my crew running DJ run up on me. Oh my God, it's like, it's so exciting. I'm, hey, what's up, bigger ranking man? You know, blah, 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 blah. I finally get to meet you. I finally get to meet him because some of my DJs, they're out of state, you know? I do this Diamond Awards every year. And my Diamond Awards is this. If you meet a girl and she hold you down while you go to jail, hold you down, help you out work, y'all pay the bills together, but then to reward her, you get her a diamond ring. You know what I'm saying? Engage her and marry her. I give all these guys who've been in the game going hard a diamond. You know, uh, and it's called a Diamond Award. They get a diamond because after you go through everything, this is your reward, a diamond. You know what I'm saying? And we, you know, have all my DJs come through and we do a DJ reunion. It goes on April 3rd, but I do it the week until April 3rd. You know, it's a whole week event in Florida, Jacksonville, Florida. I kept it in that city because that's where it was born at. That's where I, I, I really came up with it at. You know what I'm saying? So I kept it there. And it's going to be there, I think we start like the 28th. Like March 27, 28, and go all the way to, you know, April 3rd. And um, it is big for my crew, because that's when they really get to come. We all get to be together, you know what I'm saying? And if, if now that we make a, a phone, uh, a, a conference call, we let everybody vent sometime, talk about what they're going through and whatever. So having a DJ crew is just not for everybody. You know, it's, it's for somebody who really, you got to love people and you got to have patience, but you got to love people. A lot of people in this game, they don't love people. They're not people's person. Mm -hmm. They just do it for the shiny thing. They just do it so they can be, oh, glamorous ass nigga, this and that. You know, what, you know what I'm saying? I'm a type of person, I might walk into a club and I might, even though I'm popular, you know, I don't show off. You know what I'm saying? I go to do a party. I might take 200 pictures before I leave because, you know, everybody want to take a picture with the OG. You know what I'm saying? Blah, blah, blah. Let me get a picture of bigger ranking. Just to say I was with bigger ranking because I am a legend. And they said self-praise is no recommendation, but I'm going to do this for my satisfaction. I am a legend. You know what I'm saying? Straight up legend. I've been doing this for a long time. And I love it. And I excel at it. And I'm proud to call myself a legend because I am. Mm -hmm. Let people know where they can find you at on social media and online. Social media, man, you can hit me up. Bigger Ranking 00 is on Twitter. That's on um, Facebook, everything. And I have my website, which is biggerisbetter.com. I got my clothing line for the drop, Bigger is Better. And for my, uh, my whole crew, my whole crew running crew, go to www.coolrunningsdjs.com. Check out all my DJs. We got videos. We got everything on there. But Bigger is Better, that's my new website. You know, you can get your mixtape put up there. You can get your videos put up. It's real nice. Something to check out. Hey, man. It's your boy, Bigger Ranking, man. I'm here to stay, man. Legend in the making, man, for real. La La, what up? If you ain't locked in La La shit, you losing, man. My dog, I got trust issues, man. So many friend enemies out here, though. I feel like most of these niggas that come around, they got ulterior motive. I don't trust on the inside, looking in, these niggas fake. Hey, I spot. Ain't going back and forth with them, put them on the plate. Ain't that. Hey, never not the race. Hot spot, chase money, rat race. 